Um, hi, I'm uh, Imi. I'm one of the co-founders of um, an organisation called Civic Square. Um, previously, people might have known me in um, founding and running um, in fact, I'm Birmingham, uh, here in the West Midlands, uh, and um, I I was part of a of the group that curated and brought to life TEDx Brum. I previously worked in housing and international development, and previously before that, studied the sciences. Um, I am I live in Birmingham. I grew up in Birmingham, and uh, I think that's probably everything that's relevant right now to introduce myself. I still have a really troubled relationship with politics as is. Um, I occasionally veered into the formal system. I've often been encouraged to stand for something. To, something. And I've always felt incredibly um, just uncomfortable. Um, the, the polarization, the binary nature of the conversations and the discussion and the behavior um, of of so much of of um, our political sphere, as well as the incredibly good work um, that happens, is has really troubled me. Um, the way the systemic design of the whole system draws even the best people down in, into decision making and conversations and polarizations that, in any other walk of life, they would never be so sort of um, stuck on, um, has really. Uh, surprise me and I think the role of social media has also been you know it's right in your face all day every day people fighting each other and um, and so it's I, 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 I don't exaggerate when I say I've been actually deeply disturbed by so much of that um, so much of what young 10 years ago Emmy believed was possible came right in so, some so suddenly I have this sort of political awakening or not even awakening I just am one of these people these these uh, citizens who've been sleepwalking and not really understanding any of this and not having any real proximity to it wakes up 10 years ago and suddenly is like oh okay and so we're going to change our place and change our city and 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 these are the ways in which we're going to engage and suddenly we come head first into what has been the last 10 years of politics the financial crisis, watching the bailout happen without um, real thought or governance around what that money was going towards other than just bailing out um, big industries, um, watching um, the tragic uh, stuff around Joe Cox, watching what happened after 9-11, watching what happened um, through the, the rise of the Jeremy Corbyn type movement, watching the Labour Party for to be so many ways, watching the the further right or the right organise around their general ideas in a very particular way, and watching the left almost crumble in all of this um, has been just mind blowing. Um, has unfortunately, and I, it's not the first time I've said this, has has really distanced me from that world. Um, not in a way where I don't have huge. Um, empathy for all the work everyone was doing but just realizing how this system is set up to to fail everybody is it fails everybody who's involved it fails it spells us all and and people are doing an impossible task very few people within that system very few are actually there for for, for power and you know incredible overlord type power and there are there are a, a group that are very in in on that but Watching that make has has really troubled me. Actually, what politics does mean to me now is that I understand there is a deep, deep integrity in fighting for your life for the kinds of ideas and the kind of world that you, you and many others, not in a I don't mean that in a mystical singular way that we believe in, because times do present where we, we heard about that Overton window. And I remember when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, okay. Um, and all of a sudden now, things that even six months ago were talked about as completely unfathomable, um, completely impossible to do, too expensive, too large, too grandiose, too socialist, too whatever, 
now are suddenly things that might be the only things that even allow us to survive as a society mm. and and that you know what a gift you know if i live an average life at 34 what a gift to know there is absolutely the point in fighting for your lives but i think what it's what it's made me realize for your life for your ideas for what you believe the future can be what you feel like needs to happen drawing from histories and indigenous um, inspiration and wisdom and melding that with movements and technology and futurism um, and empathy and care and love and it's again a stark reminder of every year i have this stark reminder this is going to be a life's work actually good politics of any type is always a life's work that is then passed on to the next generation and i feel privileged to be in that position um i don't have children i don't have the same care responsibilities that, and the same restrictions that my mother or my grandmother or some of my peers are facing and so what a what a important time to be reminded of our responsibility and what politics really is um and you know it's it's nice to see a little bit of all of those factions being left behind at the moment as people realize that none of that is going to fight the pandemic and so they are going to have to holding people to account and pushing for better ideas is very different to trying to destroy the integrity of someone's uh, of someone's view that you don't agree with come into a space where you can keep continually working out the future I dream of a more decentralized, local but globally aware, more circular, collective, Eleanor Ostrom polycentric governance type world at a neighborhood level um, in a way where we could access what we need and live our most beautiful, stunning lives within half an hour or an hour of where we live um, so that we can move into a world where we're not pining for these long haul trips, these, these things to get away from the world that is our everyday. I need a break from work. I need, to, I need to go do that thing to get away from the life that I live because the life that I live is there to earn money, to get through, to survive. Um, it is not the most beautiful, inspiring, connected, um, resource-filled um, space. So I'd like to see the things that we do a lot of um, to get away from what we live, to give ourselves a break from what we live and the things that can often be very extractive and troublesome to become far more um, seen as luxuries seen as things that we we might access for certain reasons and that we have a lot more respect for and that even you know all this online virtual world working is showing us a lot right now it doesn't mean i'm, I'm one of these people who thinks we need to be we need to shut all the, all of our all the positivities of a globalized connected world down not at all i, I but i want the lives that we live at a local level to feel nourishing and rich in collective so that we can go on to then see how we reform that social contract with the rest of the world with um the to live in harmony with the natural resources around us and for us to have the time and space to think about that and to be able to do that um so i think firstly that's that's the kind of the future that I really want to see. I think we are going to have to go through a period where all the things that we saw as the luxuries or the things we work towards, we're going to have to we're going to have to let go of a lot of that and grieve for that and reform and build in beautiful, stunning ways. I I care about the neighbourhood and city level unit of change and what strong, thriving, collective, regenerative neighbourhoods look like. Um, really matters to me and and, and the beauty and the, the collective ownership of, of that. I feel like we really need to discover that again. Um, I less have very set ideas 
about what will happen to the political parties the I, I, at Westminster. It's not something I spend a lot of time thinking about. What I do know is that is, or what I do feel very strongly about is there will always be roles for different types of personalities and thinkers and doers and different skills and and at, at all times I've been humbled in this last 10 years of of those who come forward at a time where they need to come forward those who work and maintain in the background those who can galvanize and those who can meticulously organize and detail and how and I've been incredibly inspired by how people move through those roles at different times of life. And sometimes they need to come forward and other times they need to step back and sometimes they need to be meticulous and detailed and sometimes they can be big and, and dreamy. And so I want more space between who and why and what you need to do in the world. Um, a final thing that I really care about in this future vision is um, I think I mentioned it before as well. We're going to go through a period now where we, having had a government that's talked about low skilled workers who were, you know, uh, lots of things, um, not to paraphrase too much of what's been said, um, who are now coming back to the forum. We're realising the importance of supply chains and care workers and frontline workers, these are the people who are out there while we're sitting having this lovely mm. conversation, figuring out how to keep things going, dealing with their inner anxiety of their teams, of their families, of their jobs, of their uh, future, not having this to reflect. And suddenly these are some of the most important people that we need right now. And, and so what that leads me to think about a lot is how do we make sure that we have better ways to value all the different contributions in society? How do we make sure that those who will hopefully come over and take the reins for a bit when we're out of crisis can, can have the time now and can in all these different views and get away from this political game that is played with people's lives and their roles and their jobs and how important they are or they aren't. You know, right now, disabled people, people with chronic illnesses, people with immunosuppression are saying we've been living like this for decades, our whole lives, and we, we have not been recognised. And all of a sudden now, you know, there's, there's a, oh, you know, this, this is important and this matters. So, so in my future of that, there is a much more deeper nuanced recognition of of everyone's value and what it means to unlock people's values and what is the economic system that sits behind that that allows that to thrive just because we in peacetime or in calm everything's business as usual we can't see all of that hidden hidden and and i wonder what a young generation who will understand this will do with that knowledge what the six and seven year olds making cards uh, for those who are in their homes because they're immunocompromised and they're, they're older and explaining that to a 10 year old I wonder what what that generation and I'm so excited about what that generation would do with that level of knowledge thoughtfulness care about the resource and the planet around us the conversations it's opening up so my vision of politics is one is one that is more connected but local for the right reasons that is in sync and can live alongside like in the indigenous cultures do with mother nature and to understand how we do that um i don't know what the structures yet look like i think eleanor ostrom gave us an incredible set of resources to build on what i definitely do know is the party political system and the two-party system is dead i think deep down so many of us of us know that and um and i think in the, the general population, there's a sense of that, but there is a fear of, well, well, what do we do without it? And we're gonna start to learn that now, aren't we?